So before we start, I just want to be clear that if the alarm goes off, I have six minutes and 40 seconds ready. So we're going to do the whole thing, OK? <laughs> Steve, please. So it's been said that our national park system is the very best idea that America ever had. I think a lot of us could agree with that. But we might also think about the federal wilderness system. That's a pretty darn good idea, isn't it? I'd like to propose a third idea that a lot of you may not think about, and that's our system of national scenic trails. 19,000 miles that includes the Continental Divide Trail, the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail. Perfect places for you to get out and do a long distance hike. And that's what I want to do tonight, is talk about long distance hiking, some definitions, some do's, and some don'ts. If the only thing you know about long distance hiking is through Cheryl Strade's book, Wild, you may think that to be a long distance hiker, you have to carry a 70 pound pack, have sex on the trail while pressed up against a very large boulder, and be a past heroin addict. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you that's not true. <laughs> wow, this is a way better audience than last night. All right, so a couple of definitions. Trail angels um, bring trail magic. That can include things like water in the desert and Starbucks via packages. Trail names, hikers have lots of trail names. They get them weird ways. Ingrid licked her plate after eating a huge pile of pancakes. The waitress came by and said, my, that certainly is a happy plate. <laughs> More lingo. Through hikers tend to walk cross country. They might carry 20 pound packs and walk 16 hours a day. On the other hand, big section hikers tend to walk across state. Some of them look like they should not be stopping at a town called Pie Town. <laughs> and you might find them in a lake in the middle of the day doing the funky chicken. So long distance hiking has its own literature, maybe starting back at Lewis and Clark or way before, but I want to point to the one on the right, um, Eric Ryback's uh, book about walking the Continental Divide Trail, supposedly the first one ever. Some people say he didn't do it, that he got some rides and so forth. The point is the definition of long distance hiking is important in this community. For instance, some people would say that Peter Haskell, who only did 200 miles of the PCT with Parkinson's and had people zip up his, his uh, coat for him, not a long distance hiker. Dick Patti, who had his aortic valve replaced and eight months later walked the entire PCT but had a sag wagon, not a long distance hike. Or walking the CDT one state at a time, not a long distance hike. Well, I'd like to recast the definition. I don't think, and Kate and I don't think, that long distance hikes have to be associated with the big trails. Instead, they have three characteristics that we see. They have commitment, they have challenge, and they have elements of discovery. Inside of those three, you can see that getting from your hospital bed to the hospital hallway, that could be a long distance hike. Megan Lawson taking her two month old skiing could be a long distance hike. And Chris Copalillo doing a big portion of the John Muir Trail, which she described to me as seven days, seven women, 70 miles. And all I could think to say was, what could possibly go wrong? A little history, walking Jim Stoltz, Montana, and great walker uh, we lost a while back. I'm sure many of you know him, very sad uh, for the community. Grandma Gatewood hiked the Appalachian Trail 2,200 miles at ages 67 and 75, carrying only a duffel bag and a plastic shower curtain. <laughs> so my do's and don'ts, 10 do's and don'ts of long distance hiking. The first one's easy, don't create anchors in time. That's things like telling somebody you'll meet them in a week at a trailhead. Anchors in time destroy spontaneity, and by destroying spontaneity, they have a large part in destroying discovery. The next one might surprise you. Take the Kindle, leave the GPS at home. The Kindle can save you big days in the uh, rainstorms. You can, the Kindle weighs the same amount as a bunch of books and less than your phone and doesn't have those charging problems. So learn to read the map, read your Kindle, leave the GPS at home. Number eight has to do with families. Um, families can be a great help, but they can also be Debbie Downer types by talking <laughs> of the dangers of drug runners and illegal aliens. This is, this is Kate's uncle. Uh, we asked him to give us a ride to the Mexican border. He was from Chicago, but living in New Mexico at the time. His response, I'd rather walk through the south side of Chicago in my underwear than take you to the Mexican border. <laughs> so, um, don't be paralyzed by fear, but do recognize risks and plan for them. Very important, I think. And I'm wondering, is there just me, or has anybody else ever noticed that chocolate cliff bars and grizzly bear scat look an awful lot alike? <laughs> 
Number six is easy, don't take narcotics. A quick story, 3 a.m. departure to beat the desert heat. I have huge blisters and is thus distant, dished into our emergency stash of oxycodone. I love you, dude, I mumbled to Kate. She rolls her eyes, pulls my headlamp onto my head, facing backwards, turns it to flashing, gives me a push. Get going into the desert, she says, I'll find you later. <laughs> Number five. Don't be a lightweight, embrace your passion. I think that some of the lightweight backpacking has gotten out of hand, people trying to carry eight and 10 pound packs. If you're going into the Beartooth and you love to fly fish, for goodness sakes, take your fly rod, embrace your passion. People like number four. Do eat nonstop, why? Because you can. <laughs> so if you're like me and you always wanna lose 10 pounds, Kate and I might walk six, eight hours a day and five, use up 5,000 calories. Best thing about long distance hike, three words, best diet ever. <laughs> Number three has to do about travel. Um, a long distance hike is a tremendous way to build a trip around. It works for finding new cultures and new geographies and new traditions and meeting new people. And it's cool that in other places, trips end differently sometimes. They might end up at a pub or you might end up at a reflecting pool. And while this is all in the spirit of fun, <clears throat> do pamper yourself. It is hard work. Uh, and particularly, I want you to focus on, get a shower if you don't skip your shower. Your wife might write an email that ends like this. The rainy weather has caused Scott to have per particularly odiferous feet. I zipped him out of the tent a couple of times, but he keeps coming back. And finally, most importantly, do celebrate. Celebrate climbing mountains. Celebrate walking across a country and dipping your feet in, feet in both oceans, even if it's England and it's only 100 miles. Celebrate your child skiing a half mile. That may be her long distance hike. That's Lucy Davidson. And most importantly, celebrate friendship and good health. Because as manifest through a long distance hike, what could possibly be more important? <laughs>